Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Today I have Rachel Breer with me. Rachel, do you want to say hi? Hey, so good to be talking to you today. Thank you. Okay, Rachel, give us a little bit of background on your company, what you do, etc. Um, so our company was founded over two years ago and we focus on brands on Amazon. So making sure that they're compliant, making sure that they understand how to use sales and marketing for their listings, making sure that if they do mess up, that we're there to help them fix whatever Amazon's mad at them for. Excellent. So can we break them into two categories here? You've got suspensions or um, the recalls of accounts, mm -hmm. and then you've got like the, the Q, you know, the quality assurance. Do you want to break down the difference between yeah. those? Yeah. So, so a lot of times suspensions are about catastrophic fail failure. Something went really, really wrong. Either something went really wrong with the account or something went really wrong with a product. And so we've got to figure out what went wrong. How did it go wrong? How can we not have this happen again? Because it's expensive, right? You just spent all this time building up rank. Now it's down. Um, most of the time we can't get people back within a day or two. So their rank tanks, everything is just very frustrating. And then sometimes it's something really terrible. Like um, we just worked on a case where a baby was choking on something. And, you know, just the kind of thing where you just never want to have that kind of of message come in anyway, much less find out that you just tested it and it's true, it failed for choking hazard. So like, oh, horrible stuff. Um, so that's the, the safety side of it. We do a lot of safety incidents, uh, work on the ASINs that were taken down. And then the quality assurance side, it's it's kind of like um, product marketing in a way. So like if you say this thing is supposed to last for a year or we guarantee it for three years, uh, have you ever tested it to make sure that it will? Are you actually going to be providing people lots and lots of refunds or are you pretty confident it's actually going to manage to make so it? So prevention management. Exactly. So um, I would say that what we're really focused on is don't lose your shirt. Mm. <laughs> like how, can you, how can you work ahead of time to make sure that what you launch is what you wanted it to be and that no one's going to be mad at you? <laughs> Excellent. And in terms of suspensions, what have you seen the trends in the last year on Amazon? Have you seen a lot more uh, authentic issues? Are you seeing more of the price gouging? What, what kind of trends have you seen? Yeah, so the number one thing that we've seen that's really interesting lately is actually IP infringement issues. Mm -hmm. um, so with the new brand registry 2.0, they're way easier to file. And the thing that's interesting to me at least is that they, they wanted to launch it on time and they did, they launched it in May. Um, and it's got like one feature in it. So I know that the, the whole team on there was like, yeah, we launched on time. And I'm sure there's a whole long feature list of things they want to improve. So for now it can do one thing well and that's report infringement people. Um, but the problem is if brands start doing that or if you have fake brands, because that's been happening too. Yeah, people, in the news. Do you, want yeah, to, do you, yeah. you know the, about that, uh, the seller? The CNBC one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not just them. There's been a whole bunch of them. Yeah. So people claiming, um, one that we worked on claimed to be Mark Monitor um, operating on behalf of Samsung. They were not. Uh, so when we actually contacted Mark Monitor, they were like, we never use that email. That doesn't exist. It's not just a new thing. It's been happening for quite some time. So what I expect is that brand registry will have the same level of protections as in you can get suspended from brand registry or you can get warned at brand registry the same that you can on your seller account. I expect that to happen sometime next year. Yeah. So that's been interesting because this year at least it's really easy to take down people for IP infringement. So that's been a big thing that we've seen. The other big thing is safety incidents. Yes. So the team that does that only launched last April. So it hasn't even really been a team for only you know about a year now. So. A lot more of those, a lot more takedowns for safety, which of course I'm like, yes, finally, because it's so easy to get on Amazon and to do things that are unsafe. And so, you know, especially as someone who used to work in recalls and safety. It's like, you used finally. to work at Amazon, didn't you, <laughs> yourself? Yeah. 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 So from your perspective, with because obviously there's been a, a bit of bad press recently, you know, in different things, whether it's the price gouging, it's the... The, the, the fake lawyers and stuff that's mm -hmm. appeared recently. How do you see Amazon dealing with this? Because if we're honest, like from the other side of the fence as sellers, I think sometimes sellers feel they don't get enough support from Amazon. And yes, they love their customers and that's fantastic. And we appreciate being on the platform. But I think sometimes Amazon will shoot you in the face and then you have to work it out later. Um, and what it seems I found at the moment is when Amazon's getting a bit of bad press, you see all the Facebook groups, they're all sharing it. It's almost like they want it to get out to the public so that Amazon then does think about it. And do you see any changes happening with Amazon? Are they starting to think actually, we need to embrace our uh, sellers a bit more and communicate a bit more? Have you seen that at all? Um, no. <laughs> no. Would you like <laughs> to really. see that? Um, and you know, the, the hard part is when you're actually there, there's just a lot of 
a lot of challenges for a program manager at Amazon because yeah. you never have enough resources for one thing. Yeah. And the resources that you are given are often right out of college and know nothing. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to train them up from scratch. I mean, I had to go from a team of zero to a hundred in one year. And how do you get them all trained up? How do you make sure they all have consistent quality, that they treat all of your vendors consistently? Because I did mostly vendor work when I was yeah. actually at Amazon. But it's the same problem with sellers. How do you make sure that the experience that seller A has is the same as the experience seller B has? Well, they're completely different people with different backgrounds. How do you make the process significantly similar enough to where the experience is similar? It's hard work. Yep. And so it's helpful to get these kind of uh, bits of bad press. Actually, those would get passed around internally as well. Yep. Whenever something like that would happen, everyone would send it out and we'd be like, okay, how do we fix this? And there would be a yep. lot of like internal kind of soul searching, I guess is the best way to put it. How do we fix this? But as far as Amazon changing the way that they work towards being more seller friendly, I don't see that because yep. Sellers cause Amazon a lot of liability headaches. Of course, yeah. And just a ton of them. Yeah. Um, so I don't see that changing because there's a whole contingent of people at Amazon who are like, oh, sellers. Like, would they just not keep screwing up? Like, that would be yeah. nice. <laughs> Well, so you've got two sides, haven't you? You've got the you've got you've got innocent sellers who don't do the yeah, kind of black hat stuff yeah. who get suspend their problems, and the, it's difficult for them because it's like we're trying to play by the book here. We're watching everyone around us cheating, and maybe Amazon's not doing anything about it. And it's like, well, why should I be by the book if I'm not going to get a fair yeah, rap here? Yeah. You know, so and eventually Amazon will catch on. So yeah. one thing that I also worked on was um, I used to be in fraud. Yeah. And Amazon keeps track of all of the traffic that's coming to the site. And I know one of the things we've gotten a lot of clients who are upset about is how come these people who just launched are now on page one? That's yeah. not fair. Yeah. Like, yeah, they probably cheated. There's there's very little doubt to me that they probably cheated. Yeah. Um, and the, Amazon keeps track of all the traffic to their website. They keep track of who clicked. They keep track of where they click from. They keep track of all of it. Mm -hmm. And they decide how much to let in and how much to not let in. Yeah. So I would suspect that this will eventually be a thing, just like every bit of what they've done for selling has been in increments yeah. eventually they'll fix that too just not today yes <laughs> excellent well let's end that there thank you so much for your time if people want to reach out for you and get your services how's the best way to contact you uh, the best way is through the website so yeah. www.thinkcascadia.com um, you can also email at info at thinkcascadia.com excellent uh, thank you again for your time today thank you